Hello, today we'll be taking a look at the new Rhino 5 and using the Microscribe series arms inside of Rhinoceros 5. First things first, we're going to want to pull up our 3D digitizing toolbar that will allow us to use the Microscribe with Rhino. So the way we get that is to go to Tools, Toolbar Layout, and then <clears throat> as soon as we see toolbar layout we have 3D digitizing which is the very first toolbar of the menu we'll go ahead and grab that and say OK then we'll want to drag that toolbar and drop it wherever we want to whether it be all the way up at the top or in our actual menu structure which we can do also the second thing we'll want to do is connect the Microscribe arm to Rhinoceros. In order to do that, we press the Connect Digitizer button, we left click on this icon, and we have a selection of digitizers. The first one that comes up is the Faro Digitizer, so we'll want to drop down this menu and select Microscribe Digitizer and press OK. Now a note for basis arm users, we can connect the basis 3D digitizing arms to Rhinoceros also. We just need to install a plugin into the software, which you can find on our website, and then the basis arm will be included in this list of uh, drop down icons. So we'll go ahead and press OK, and we can see in our command line well, it will first bring up the notification saying please confirm that the default tip is installed and the microscribe is in the home position. So in order to put it in the home position, uh, for all microscribe arms, rotate them counterclockwise until they reach a hard stop and that will drive them to be homed. Uh, if you have a MX arm with a sixth axis, you'll want to align those two hash marks on that sixth encoder, which is the probe stylus. So we'll just rotate it all the way counterclockwise. You'll feel it hit a hard stop. Uh, this is going to be for MX arms and also G2 arms. Then press OK. Alright, so now we want to enter our device coordinates. So this is our origin. Uh, we're just setting up a basic Cartesian coordinate. So we want to first give it uh, the origin, which is 0, 0. So we'll take a point with the Microscribe, uh, which will be hitting the front trigger button, or for old Microscribe users, the gray trigger button on the box. So we'll enter the origin, and then you can see in the command line it says enter x-axis. So we'll go in the x-positive direction. Then the Y axis, we'll give it the Y positive. And now uh, it says pick origin in Rhino or press enter to use world origin. So what we will do is press enter, which will drive this origin to the origin that we see on our screen now. So I'll press enter and we have homed our microscribe inside of Rhinoceros. Now we have a few different options uh, in this 3D digitizing toolbar. We can take multiple points. So if we want to come in here and just start laying out multiple points, you can see as I come right into where I created my origin, you can see it coming into that position, then leaving as I go away. So we can take points. Uh, say I want to take points on this flat surface. We can do that to define a plane. Say I wanted to come over here and define another plane that was another flat surface. So we can see in our viewpoint, uh, our viewports, that it's a flat surface at a slight angle. But we can come in to find a plane off those points. Do whatever you want to. Um, that's your basic point entering functionality. We also have uh, interpolated points, which is essentially a B spline. So if we want to come in, take the profile of an object, we can come around that object and take the profile of it to extrude out as a solid body. Uh, that's one thing we can do. 
We can also come in and uh, take normal lines, which is great for anyone wanting to program 5-axis machines because that includes the IJK information when we enter the point. You can see that we have a line coming off defining uh, the vector that this probe is coming in and taking the point on. So that's also helpful for uh, five-axis programmers. All right. So those are the basics of our 3D digitizing toolbar. Now we also have uh, a few other uh, things we can do inside here uh, that I forgot to mention, such as digitize planar section curves. So digitizing planar section curves is great because this is where we do, uh, we create a bunch of cross sections and then we can uh, define lines uh, or points to those cross sections and then create splines in order to create a lofted surface. So uh, the way we do that is we first define a plane. Alright. And then we give it an axis. And then we can come in and take points all throughout this set of planes. And I'll actually do that one more time in a different manner just to give us a little bit better idea of how that works. So um, if you press the top button, we can go back into the last function we created. So the top bu button on the Microscribe hand switch. So we'll do one point on the plane, second on point on the plane, uh, or actually, yes, and then we'll do the start of the axis, and then we'll do the end point of the axis, and we can also def define the number of frames we want to do in the point sp space, and you can see that in our command line. So now we have a series of planes that we can put points through. So as I just come up and down through these planes, you can see we're creating points. And then we can do uh, whatever we want to with these points. Uh, right now, if I finish it, it's going to try and best fit curves through those points. And then we could loft those curves, so you see that here. Um, but we could also do points, polylines, and then we have our point spacing options. So those are the main functions you're going to be using in the 3D digitizing toolbar. Uh, and we do also have uh, a calibration icon and setting digitizer scale uh, or pausing the digitizer. Most of these aren't necessary for uh, any applications that uh, our customer base generally uses. So the other thing to note inside of Rhinoceros is any point function can be used with the Microscribe. So if we want to digitize polyline, we can come in here and now start creating polylines. And then we have our polyline. If we want to come in and create a circle or an ellipse, we can create an ellipse. If we want to create a circle, say a three-point circle, we can come in and create our three-point circle. So as we can see we have a lot of options for uh, creating inside of Rhino. Now one thing to note is that uh, when you want to treat these as 2D curves this can be quite a difficult task uh, naturally just because there's a lot of variation when we create lines. You can see that uh, just from going up and down on the part it's hard to stay perfectly flat. Uh, so this one's a little over exaggerated, uh, this spline right here to give you an idea, but uh, the way that we will come in and actually work with this uh, as a two-dimensional line is use the transform project to c-plane command. So if we highlight this line, we're going to take that and we also want to delete the input object. So now we have dropped that down to our C plane. It's perfectly flat, and we can do whatever we want to with it. Say we want to come in, uh, connect these two lines. So we'll just come in, create a line segment. Come to the end of that one, to the end of that one. So now we have a closed off body. If we want to come in and do a solid extrude planar curve, we can now extrude this curve 
however we want to. Uh, and we'll also want to grab this guy. So hold on, do that, and grab. There we go. All right, so now we can come up and grab our body. Now what's nice is I'm taking the microscribe and now we can use the microscribe to adjust our height and come in and select the top of our surface, grab it, and now we have a solid body that's extruded all the way up to this top of our surface. So these are the basics of Rhino. This will give you everything you need to get started with Rhinoceros as far as uh, the basic functionality of the microscribe. Uh, the rest of running si Rhinoceros is really going to be Rhinoceros specific tools uh, such as, I can give an example, uh, which would be if we come in here and say we wanted to create a surface just from points, uh, we can come in and create a spline. So if we want to define a surface, let's first come in here, create a spline, just to give us a perimeter to work with. Okay. So we have a perimeter to work with now, and we're going to delete off some of this other stuff just to get rid of some junk. Actually, we'll just delete it all and start again. There we go. So I'm just going to, I'm just sketching on the table, nothing really specific. All right. And then we can come in here. Alright, and we have created a boundary. So now we want to put some points inside of this boundary to define our surface, right? So we'll come in here, start creating points. So we'll click the point icon. and we'll put a bunch of points inside of this boundary to define this surface. So it's probably going to be a little wavy. We're not making anything perfect by any means. But it'll be interesting to see what happens. So now we have a bunch of points inside of this surface to define everything. So now we can do what we call a patch surface where we just come in we select everything, press enter, press enter, and now we have a surface patched through these points. So you can see this is where Rhino really comes in handy because it's very, very easy to create uh, organic surfaces. So again, we were just doing this out in space, nothing really specific, just to give you an idea of how it all works and giving you something that you can now run with and start playing around with. So this should give you a great uh, starting point for using the Microscribe with Rhinoceros. Uh, if you have any further questions, feel free to contact us at www.gomedger3d.com or at 434-946-9125.